Hello to each one of you in Life Spring. It's lovely to be with you today. Um, I've watched quite a few of your virtual walks and really loved the creativity. Walking through the letter Paul wrote to the Ephesians is so powerful, so challenging and so inspiring. Today we're looking at the second of Paul's prayers prayers that he is praying for the church at Ephesus and this second prayer is about enabling us to live in all of God's fullness. It's about knowing God's love and being in Christ. Paul was in prison but his thoughts were not for material or physical needs but about the deep things of the heart. It's good to pray for material things, but very important to focus on our deep inner needs. I'm going to concentrate on the central verses of this prayer. They follow on from the first part, which is just like the start of the Lord's Prayer, where it honours God. And go on to the petition part which is Paul's prayer for them and of course for us too. There are four requests, one leading on from the other rather like opening the parts of a telescope. Firstly he prays that we would have a deep inner spiritual strength. This leads to a deeper experience of Christ then this enables us to understand the incredible love of God, which results in us being filled with all the fullness of God. So we're going to look at these four points very briefly. So firstly, where does our spiritual strength come from? It comes from the power of the Spirit which comes from God's treasure house. In other words, we don't have to work anything up at all. We can always ask God for his spirit to fill us so that we can receive his power. That leads us to a deeper experience of Christ. And to convey this, I think it's because it's so important, Paul uses different pictures. He says that Christ may dwell in our hearts and that word dwell means be at home. And so I have got my, my home piece of equipment here which um, reminds us that God wants to settle down and feel at home in our hearts. The second picture he uses is a horticultural one and says, being rooted, let our roots go deep into the soil for nourishment and stability. Our roots going deep into the love of Christ. And I've got two things here, which I hope demonstrate this a little bit. I've got a tiny pot here with a very small plant in it, which I think you'll be able to see. I planted this as a seed at exactly the same time as I planted this one. And this one has got a huge area for its roots to grow down into. And um, you look at the phenomenal difference. And I think that's the most amazing picture. If we allow our roots to go really deep down into God, we are going to be completely different to if we have very, very shallow roots. It's still the same plant, but it isn't going to do anything like what that large plant, it's called Love Lies Bleeding, that particular one. Um, but it's a wonderful example. So there's a bit of a challenge there. In that where do I get my nourishment and stability from? Are my roots deep enough? The third analogy he uses, he says, being grounded and established in love. And this is an architectural term, and it reminded me so much of the Shard. I've been up there several times and love it. Um, and 700 truckloads of concrete were poured into the foundations so that the building 
could stand at 310 meters high. And uh, there were big piles uh, that went into the ground 53 meters deep and then surrounded by all this concrete so that the shard could be built on such strong foundations. And this is what Paul is praying, that only a deep experience with Christ can sustain us, could sustain the Ephesians through the severe trials of life. The third part, as we open the telescope, the more we're established in God, the more we realise his incredible love. We try and understand it. Paul talks about grasping hold of it, laying hold of it. And he mentions the four dimensions of wide, long, high, deep, just the eternal nature, the far reaching nature of God's love. It's greater than all knowledge. It's so rich, the price can't be calculated. It will never run out. We can't be torn from God's love. And then the fourth point, as we pull out the remaining section of the whole telescope. Understanding all those other three parts means that we just want to be full of God more and more filled with God himself because he is so incredible. Filled with his power, his love, his grace, his strength, his understanding and his love for others and for ourselves. It's a phenomenal prayer that Paul prays and, and it's so relevant for us today. And in conclusion, I just wanted to read from the Amplified Version of the Bible. I remember when this began to come out um, when I was young and there are some times when it's so helpful and I'm going to finish by reading from the Amplified Version this very section that we've been looking at and it's my prayer for you. May God grant you out of the riches of his glory to be strengthened and spiritually energised with power through his spirit in your inner self, indwelling your innermost being and personality, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through your faith, and may you, having been deeply rooted and securely grounded in love, be fully capable of comprehending with all the saints, God's people, the width and length and height and depth of his love, fully experiencing that amazing, endless love. And that you may come to know, practically through personal experience, the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience, that you may be filled up throughout your being to all the fullness of God, so that you may have the richest experience of God's presence in your lives, completely filled and flooded with God himself. Amen. God bless each one of you. <laughs>